Hey everybody, Mobius Y here with another video for Stellaris Console Edition. Today's video is going to be going over a subject that I see asked a lot, and it's about managing the middle to late game colonies and planets that you've established, and ultimately your economy in the later portions of the game. I see this question crop up pretty regularly in my YouTube comments. I get asked it on Xbox Live messages, it crops up in the various discords that I'm a part of, and I see it posted in the Stellaris Console Edition Reddit uh, fairly regularly. So I'm hoping to address this in this video, which is going to be 100% unscripted. I'm pretty much just winging it, but I still intend to get my point across. Uh, now, before we continue with this video, if you'd like to see more Stellaris Console Edition content, I upload at least one Stellaris Console Edition video uh, once per week. Uh, sometimes more if I make some pre-recorded content like this particular video. So subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload new videos. Also check out the links in the description below. You'll find one to the official Stellaris Discord. Become a part of the greater Stellaris community. Join that official Stellaris Discord. But you'll also find links to my Twitch channel where I stream four times a week. And I guarantee to stream Stellaris Console Edition on Tuesdays. So come on by, ask me questions on the Tuesdays when I'm playing Stellaris Console Edition. That's a good time to uh, interact with me, posit me with questions. I try to answer them as best as I can whilst I am there in the game. You'll also find a link to my Twitter feed. Give me a follow. I post important announcements there all the time. And last but not least, I'll link to my own personal Discord for fans of my content. It's not mandatory, but I highly recommend it. Okay, so I don't have a pre um, a pre-selected save file. This is actually in my current Iron Man save. I'm playing as a Machine Empire, the Model 16 Fabricators. And if you look in the bottom left, you'll notice that it is very late in the game. On the right-hand side in the outliner, you see that I have uh, 40 planets under my control. And in the top, the total amount of pops in my empire is over 4,000. Uh, so how do I deal with this much stuff in this later portion of the game? Um, Simply put, there's really two ways to do it. One, you suck it up and do it manually with lots of pop resettlement. Or two, uh, use use your sectors and automate your sectors. Uh, I'll quickly go into automating sectors, which I pretty much never do myself because um, I think it doesn't do a terribly good job. If you go into the Planet and Sectors tab, which is um, accessible through the Cosmography uh, selection on the left-hand side, uh, you can choose to automate your sectors, uh, assign them a leader, and uh, tell them which, uh, which kind of um, resources you want them focusing on, uh, just by uh, going, here, going in here and selecting that, and you want to change the leader, you can rename the sector here, uh, but you can also change the sector's focus itself, and you can use these options here to add some additional resources to their stockpile so that they can construct the buildings and districts that uh, the automation is deeming necessary to construct. Uh, personally, I don't really bother with that. It does help reduce the micromanagement, so if you want to go that route, um, I mean, go for it, all for you. I don't bother with that myself because I'd rather micromanage everything myself, which, yeah, it's a major pain in the ass, but uh, it's just something that has to be done at this current uh point in the game. Um, so going through all my 40 planets, I don't individually go through each and every planet at once and go, hmm, what, uh, what needs doing through here? Uh, I, I keep tabs on which planets I know have some uh, restricted jobs, and when I see unemployment on them, I open up those jobs again, and I know which planets I have completed all development on. For example, my home world on main facility, I'm not going to be upgrading these research complexes and there are no more districts I can build. So if I ever see unemployment on main facility, I know that I need to resettle some pops. Um, if I see unemployment on font of knowledge, however, uh, I can go over to the other tab. I know that I still have a lot of job slots that need, uh, that need to be opened uh, because there's a lot of available fabricator jobs, but I'm currently I'm currently locking 37 of them, and I don't want to open all of them up and move um, 37 maintenance drones into fabricators because then that, that will absolutely kill the amenities production on this planet. So I simply open up two more fabricator jobs, and then I know when uh, when some more pops have grown on this planet, I need to come back here and uh, open up these jobs. So how do I know 
uh, how do I remind myself to go back and check out which planets need to have pops resettled or need jobs opened up? Well, I know the average amount of growth speed on my planets. Now, since I'm playing as a machine empire, pretty much every planet in my empire has the same amount of growth speed, uh, 9.2 points per month. So uh, about uh, every year I get a new pop, a little less than a year, I do believe I get a new pop. Um, so every planet is producing pops at that rate. Obviously, it'll be a little bit different for organic pops because there's things like immigration pull and immigration push and uh, colonies that are overcrowded with low housing or have unemployment do uh, reduce pop growth speed because they have more immigration push, etc., etc. But the point still stands. Uh, every couple of years, I need to go back through uh, this long-ass list of planets and colonies that I have under my control and resettle pops from planets that are having a severe unemployment issue. And the easiest way to do that is we open up uh, a planet that already has some unemployment. We go over to the population tab, hit this resettle option here, and on the right side, I'm I want to select one of my newer colonies that has some open jobs. So we're going to look for something that has oh here's a good one, good thoughts has nine available jobs right now, and uh, I can probably make more if necessary. Uh, now energetics had only two unemployed pops, but there's probably other colonies with more. So on the left side, I hit left trigger and open up the list of planets on the left, and I'm looking for colonies that have a lot of unemployment, like Mines has 11 unemployed uh, drones. Also, Mine has 12 unemployed drones. There's 10 on more minerals, 10 on Fort Mine, 12 on Energon, 12 on She's Gonna Blow, 10 on Fortress Energy, etc., etc. I go through this whole list and see which one has the most unemployed pops. Uh, now, I do have to keep, tr like I said, I do have to keep track of which ones uh, are simply unemployed because they do have open jobs. I've just restricted them. So goodies, I might want to go and double check if I actually have uh, some jobs available there. But for now, let's just resettle some pops until we see unemployment on good thoughts. Uh, so now I'm going to go back and check on goodies, which is a generator world. And is it possible for me to open up jobs here? I could. I could build some alloy mega forges. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that until I have more volatile moats being produced throughout the Empire. And then that, and then I can upgrade these uh, alloy foundries to alloy mega forges, and that will open up a lot more jobs. However, um, I just resettled all the pops, so I know I'm not missing out on any potential production on the planet that I just resettled them from. However, on good thoughts, we now have four unemployed pops. And I can't construct any more buildings because all the building slots, uh, building slots, excuse me, are taken up. Uh, I do have seven more districts available to build though, so let's go ahead and just queue up five more generator districts. That will give us five technician jobs. So the four unemployed pops are more than taken care of. And then the last two districts will just do nexus districts to give us some more housing. Uh, we can always change that out later uh, if we have um, far too much housing and we could be producing more energy credits, then great, we can do that. I go through these lists and I do this every few in-game years because eventually what happens is there's just some planets that you've ignored for a while that have uh, a lot of unemployed pops on them. Uh, where was one of the examples? Mines here. Uh, I obviously haven't resettled anybody away from this planet for quite some time. That's why there's 11 unemployed drones on it. Uh, so I do know that uh, before too much longer I'll get an alert saying that there is rising unemployment on this colony. So I'll, I will want to make sure that I resettle them uh, away from this uh, particular colony to a newer one. For example, Got Him is a much newer colony, and by resettling pops to it, I open up all these building slots much more quickly, and uh, I can um, much I can further establish uh, the economy on that individual planet itself. So let's actually do that right now. Uh, where is it? Good thoughts, derp. So you see what I mean? This is a pain in the ass, but it uh, to maximize the productivity of your empire and make sure that you have not just a thriving economy, but an absolute powerhouse of an economy, this is 100% necessary. It's not fun. It is by no means fun, not even close, but it is nonetheless somewhat necessary. So I have a lot more district slots available. I added one more mining district, uh, one or two more mining districts 
filled in these three building slots with alloy foundries, and we have how many mining districts being constructed already? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, sorry, this one's a nexus district, but nonetheless, it's creating two jobs. So we have ten things under construction that are opening up another twenty jobs. We only have seven unemployed pops. If I wanted to have those drones working right now, I could open up the tech drone jobs and then restrict them again once those fabricator jobs uh, open up with those alloy foundries. That way I can have enough maintenance drones producing enough amenities for the planet, etc., etc. Yes, this is tedious. Yes, this is a pain in the ass. And uh, yes, it results in me pausing the game every few in-game years. Uh, but that's just how uh, how it has to be done at this point in time to make sure you are maximizing the potential uh, resource output of your entire empire. New colonies, you need to resettle from older colonies that are pretty much fully developed and you don't plan to develop any, any further or, or at least for a long time. Resettle them to those new colonies so that those new colonies get their building slots online. You can upgrade the capital buildings a hell of a lot faster. Uh, and just make sure that those new colonies have a whole bunch of spare jobs available or will be constructing them uh, pretty shortly. Uh, this is all entirely possible if you don't have an economy that you're re recovering from because it was in the crapper due to some kind of um, major setback. Do you know, for example, uh, maybe you opened up the L Cup cluster and the Great Tempest came around and uh, started beating up half of your empire, or the Prekikiti came aw uh, were awakened at some point, or you pissed off a fallen empire and they uh, wound up demolishing a couple of your colonies. Who knows? Uh, those can happen in Stellaris, but barring those uh, external interventions that can really set you back, uh, by the time you get to about 75 to 100 years, which is, you know, in my opinion, kind of sort of the mid-game, uh, you should be having a thriving economy where you have uh, several hundred units of income in energy credits, minerals, uh, food and consumer goods, even if you're an organic empire, and a couple hundred alloys. Uh, and that's just kind of the building blocks to setting up a thriving economy like you see here. I have over 4,000 energy per month. I have over 7,000 minerals per month, over 2,000 alloys per month. And if I was playing an organic empire, I'd want to make sure I have anywhere between 500 to 1,000 food and 500 to 1,000 consumer goods per month at this point of the game. And obviously strategic resources will play an important part. I know that when I upgrade those alloy foundries on any of my forge worlds, I'm going to want to create some more chemical plants on some of my other colonies. Um, so the biggest thing to make sure that you're able to resettle pops from old colonies onto new ones is to constantly be looking for new colonies that you can set up. For example, here in Hiatum, I believe it was uh, Hiatum 2, is a size 18 ocean world. If I was playing an organic empire that had a dry climate preference, I would want to consider uh, if the habitability was uh, acceptable enough, say 60 or 70 percent, even with the difference in climate preference, I'd still want to colonize this world and consider terraforming it to a much more uh, amenable climate. Or if the climate was low, say maybe 40 or only 40 or 30 percent, terraform it first. That way it opens up the colony for me to colonize later on. And if there are no habitable worlds available, you got to look for, uh, in the expansion planner, you got to be looking for. Um, planets with the terraforming candidate modifier which uh, are planets like ooh, not that one that's a terraforming candidate that I already have colonized like Eras 9 for example which is already uh, terraformed into a machine world but it has the terraforming candidate uh, planet modifier meaning that it's not a habitable world but you can terraform it into one uh, so you want to keep an eye out for those that is one huge thing to use the expansion planner for and just remember that you can only terraform worlds that uh, are within your empire's borders. So if that means expanding your borders some uh, to make sure that there is a not only a current habitable world, but also a terraforming candidate within your borders for future colonies, uh, by all means do so. Uh, other options include constructing habitats, uh, which I don't really do myself anymore. I don't think habitats are that good at this point in the game. Uh, hopefully... Uh, when we get the next major update and get to, say, version 2.7 or 2.8 on console edition, uh, maybe habitats will be far more useful. Uh, and the other major thing is constructing ring worlds is huge because each section of a ring world can have 50 districts on it. 50 districts produces 100 jobs just from the districts alone. 
Uh, so you can have a lot of housing on there and have some really high level buildings, some, a lot of tier three buildings that pr each produce another eight job slots, for example. Uh, so there's all those options in order to just keep expanding and keep making sure that your pops that are unemployed and overcrowding a lot of your older colonies have somewhere to go uh, eventually. If not right away, then sometime down the line. You got to be uh, thinking ahead even when you're in the middle of a war. For example, Fortress Energy here is running into some problems because we're at negative 14 amenities and we only have uh, 10 unemployed drones right now. That's an issue because even if I resettle those 10 drones away, we'll still be in the negative on amenities. So I'm going to have to uh, probably demolish a generator district and create another nexus district so that we have another maintenance drone or maybe even construct another maintenance uh, another maintenance depot to uh, get more maintenance drones for amenities um, so I'm kind of going off on a tangent here there definitely are situations that crop up where you simply can't expand and there are no new territories that you can claim with uh, future colony can uh, future colony candidates uh, that happens quite often I kind of put this game on easy mode there was only a few other empires uh, most of which I already annihilated um, in this particular game uh, but you know when you spawn in with lots of empires for example you might get locked in and you're you're stuck with a limited amount of space well again that's when you fall back to you got to look for those terraforming candidates uh, and if necessary construct some habitats and construct some ring worlds and even if all of that isn't available and you're in such a tight and confined space where there's just nothing available for you to expand to in order to move your new pops to then you have to consider enacting the planetary decisions, uh, cease robot production, cease drone production, uh, or enable population controls, whatever uh, the decisions are called. I'm pretty sure I got the names right. Uh, enacting those decisions will stop all growth on that planet and or colony or whatever. Um, ideally, you don't want to use this just on planets that are fully developed. For example, you still want your old colonies like your home world even when it's fully developed and you don't plan to upgrade any more uh, any more buildings to make more jobs uh, it's still a good idea to have it growing pops as another source of growth so that you can resettle those pops and uh, have your new colonies uh, grow and build up that much faster uh, however if you just don't have a choice there's nowhere else you you can find that you're going to and you're like I don't know if I'll be able to get a new colony for at least a couple decades in the game because I can't build habitats yet. I don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, proper uh, resources and economy to build up habitats reliably. I don't want to use habitats, uh, or it's just too early for you to be building ring worlds. And there's no real useful or uh, not useful. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, viable terraforming candidates within your empire. Uh, then you do have to enact uh, population controls and cease the growth on all your colonies. And that's when you need to start thinking about uh, taking a much more uh, militaristic approach to expanding your territory. Go to war with somebody, uh, look for colonies and uh, habitable worlds and terraforming candidates that are close to your borders uh, that you can take over and add to your territory and would make good colonies for you to uh, have them churning out resources and resettling new pops to. Um, all this combines together into a bit of a like it's it's a bit of a pain in the ass it's, especially if you're able to sit there and just continue resettling pops from your old colonies to your new colonies uh, because you still have so many habitable worlds or terraforming candidates uh, available within your territory like I have a lot of habitable worlds in my territory right now uh, that I'm not even uh, I'm not even colonizing just yet so I still have plenty of room to grow uh, the the biggest and best way to make sure that uh, you are e able to resettle those pops off of your older worlds uh, where they're not doing much for you by being unemployed and making the planet overcrowded is to simply have newer worlds for them to be resettled to. That's the best way to do it and like I said you pick a planet that has uh, an unemployed icon on it, see how much unemployment it has, uh, maybe there's just some jobs that you need to open up because you've restricted some jobs on it uh, which I myself do quite regularly. For example, you see here on 44, I have a lot of restricted jobs, 14. Uh, once I resettle a bunch of pops, I can open these up, make sure they have jobs. 
Um, it's a lot of micromanagement and it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, I won't argue that one bit, but it's the best way to manage your empire and make sure that you have an economy going as strong as this empire's economy is in the later portions of the game. Like, like I said, it'll be slightly different with an organic empire because you'll have to be worrying about uh, food and consumer goods, uh, so, but um, the, the premise generally stays the same. Now, I do want to point out that this, uh, this whole thing is subject to change sometime in the future. If you go to the Stellaris uh, official paradox form, excuse me, in the Stellaris area, there was the most recent dev diary. I think it was number 161. I can't remember. Um, there was actually a post where they are working on implementing systems to reduce the amount of micromanagement, especially in the late game when you have uh, hundreds of or thousands of pops throughout your empire and you have dozens of colonies. Uh, on your habitats, your ring worlds, your planets, etc., etc., uh, they are working on uh, implementing systems to drastically reduce the micromanagement. So, you know, half of your game time isn't spent resettling pops from planet to planet. They are working on that, but by the time that comes to PC, I think it'll be. I would wager it will be, you know, like mid or late 2021 before that happens. So we probably won't see that on console until about summertime 2022. Uh, would be my guess. So until we get uh, a better uh, implementation of managing pops um, in the console edition, this is just the way it is and it's the way it has to be. Like I said, there's two ways to do it. One is uh, automate your sectors and that does alleviate some of the micromanagement, but I don't think that it's as effective uh, to make sure that you have um, a massive, powerful ec uh, economy um, then if you just do what I do, which is micromanage it, uh, pause the game every, you know, three, four, five in-game years, depending on how many planets you have growing pops. Obviously, you'll need to do it more often uh, if you have more planets, because that's just more sources of uh, population growth. Um, so every three to four to, four to five in-game years, uh, pause what you're doing, go through it, and be like, okay, so I just I just made these new colonies. Uh, they're, they only have one building slot unlocked. Uh, how many old colonies do I have that can resettle, you know, three, four, five, or twelve unemployed pops to this new colony to uh, to get it up and running and uh, make sure that's cranking out some resources for me? Um, that's just the way it is. Um, I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't really think that uh, uh, I don't like how the late game of Stellaris uh, kind of turns into uh, resettlement simulator <laughs> more so than anything else. Um, but that's just, it's just the way it is, and in order to uh, be able to do everything else that you want in the game, such as, you know, go to war with fallen empires or defeat the endgame crisis, as you can see I'm battling the, the contingency here, uh, and winning, uh, you need to be doing this because the uh, to be able to, you know, be a military juggernaut in the galaxy, you need to also be an economic powerhouse, and the best way to do that is to uh, be as efficient as possible, with um, with making sure that all of your people are working is basically how it goes. So I think I've rambled on long enough. I hope I got my point across. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of what the late game devolves into, uh, but it's just the way it is. And um, rather than complain about it, I just suck it up and do it uh, because I, I, love the, I love the game and I want to play the game. And I want to defeat uh, Fallen Empires. I want to defeat Endgame Crises. And in order to do that, I just got to suck it up and deal with the uh, very tedious late game population and planet management. It's just the way the game is. And, uh, you know, until we get something better, I'm okay with this. So that'll sum, up, sum it up for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Like I said, if you want to see more, subscribe to the ch channel. Click the bell icon so you're notified uh, whenever I upload a new video. Uh, I upload at least one Stellaris console edition video per week, typically on uh, Tuesdays, um, as that is when I stream Stellaris console edition. So come on by, uh, check out my Twitch link in the description below. Give me a follow there and come on by and watch me playing when I'm live. It's a good time to ask me questions and I'll answer them as best as I can. Uh, you'll also find a link to my Twitter feed in the description. Give me a follow. I post important announcements there all the time. And last but not least, a link to my own personal Discord for fans of my content to join. Uh, most everybody in that Discord plays Stellaris Console Edition, so if you want, you could even set up multiplayer games, but uh, we have community events there and viewer polls, uh, so that's the place to be if you want to take part uh, 
as a viewer of my content. And last but not least, there is a link to the official Stellaris Discord in the description below. Uh, as I said, become part of the Greater Stellaris community and join the official Discord. That's it for now. This is Mobius Wise signing off. Hope to see you again real soon. Until then, take care.